Welcome to Learning Lua, where we are covering how to use the Lua scripting language to do basic application development. In this part, we're going to look specifically at the if-then command structure. The if-then structure in Lua is very much like what you'll find in other scripting and programming languages. It can be used for handling any decision or multiple situations where you need to have the programming code go to a specific function or handle a specific set of code inside your application. Basic structure is that you'll have your command if, the comparison that needs to occur, the keyword then, any code that needs to happen, and then you complete the if then structure with the keyword end. The comparison operators used for an if then structure are and, or, and not. We also have the greater than and less than symbols and you can also use the greater than or equal, less than or equal, not equal, or equal comparison operator. We should make a note of two specific operators there. To do a not equals, it uses the tilde and the equal symbol. And to do an equal comparison requires two equal signs. Otherwise, you're just doing an assignment, which is a single equal sign. Here we have an example of several comparisons. I've got the key, I've created the variable count as a local variable and set that variable equal to zero. In the first situation, we're checking to see if count is equal to one, which of course it is not. So our first print statement is not printed. In the second situation, I'm checking if count is less than or equal to one. If so, it will print less than or equal if then structure, which it does. So this condition is being met. Third situation is where it count is greater than or equal to one, which of course it's not in this situation, so print command will not be printed. And in our final situation, we're comparing count is not equal to one, which of course it is not equal to one, so we get a not equal if then structure printed down below. So if we take into account our checking for our comparison operators and using the keywords and or not, let's see how those would be used in an typical if-then structure. In all evaluations for if-then, the software is checking to see is this a true or false condition, and that's all that's being evaluated. So when we utilize and, or, and the keyword not, we are specifically telling the software that it must meet the false or true condition for more than one situation. I've created the variables count, answer, and lives, and given them all values. And in this first situation, I'm checking to see if count is equal to one, which is a true situation. I'm also checking to see if answer is equal to yes, which is also a true situation. Because of the keyword and, both of these must evaluate to a true situation for the comparison to be evaluated as a true situation. So in this case, if then using the keyword and is executed and we get the first statement in our output. In the second situation, we have if count is equal to one or answer is equal to no. Of course, answer is currently equal to yes, so the second part is evaluating to false. But because count equals one is evaluating to true and we have the keyword or, as long as one of the two conditions that are in this comparison evaluate to a true situation, the code following it will be executed, which of course it is down below. Not is evaluating the opposite of the situation. So because count is checking for is it equal to zero, which it is not, count is equal to one, this would be a false situation, but the keyword not reverses what is being examined. So since this evaluates to false, Throwing the not on it evaluates it as a true situation. So as long as count is not equal to zero, then this is evaluating as a true situation. Nots can be a little confusing. You also need to have the parentheses around the keyword or else it will not evaluate correctly. Not is looking for a true false situation. So this needs to be already computed and the parentheses force this computation for it or evaluation to go ahead and occur before the not is evaluated. So it's critical to use parentheses in more complex situations when you're doing 
comparison operations, such as this final situation where we've got, we're evaluating count is equal to one and looking at if answer is equal to no or lives is equal to zero. As long as this section evaluates to true, then our and will be evaluated as a true situation. Without utilizing parentheses in complex comparison operations, you may get some very strange results. Extending the if then is the else command. Else command allows us to handle situations where the first condition is not met. So we're able to evaluate a comparison. If the comparison situation is found to be true, then the first set of code is executed. In all other situations, the code after the else will be executed. So in this case, I've created the variable count and set it equal to zero. If count is equal to one, then the first print statement will be executed. In all other situations, in other words, in all cases where count is not equal to one, the second set of commands, or in this case our print statement, will be executed. So in our output you see if then else where count is not equal to one is what's executed. We change this value to one and then the first one is what's executed. So in all other situations, the else is what will be run in the, in the program. Another, a common question that's asked about for those who are getting started in Lua programming, or any programming language for that matter, is whether or not you can nest ifs. A nested if, if you're not familiar with that term, is where you have an if-then inside the structure of, an, of a first if-then structure. So if a comparison, then. If a second comparison, then. You have your code and then you have your end command and your optional code. It is critical that you have an end command for every if. So if you have an if here, you have an end at the end of your structure, and if you have a nested if, you also have to have an end for that second if inside your code. Let's take a look at what that would look like inside our programming. So here I've got two variables, count is equal to zero, answer is equal to yes. If count is equal to zero, then if answer is equal to yes, print the statement and then we can have our end. Else, if answer is equal to no, then output the second statement. And in, our, in this particular situation, we have the count equal to zero and answer equal to yes, so the first command is what is printed. You can have as many nested ifs as need be, but do remember you must have an end for every if as part of that structure. Nested ifs can be confusing, so for your own sanity, always remember to properly indent your code to make it more readable and be able to track for any errors much more easily. The final part of the if-then structure is the else-if. This is the same as an else that is followed by an if, but it avoids the use of multiple ends. So you can have your, your first comparison, your code, then an else-if, and your condition, then code that applies to that. This is commonly used in place of the SELECT statement. If you're coming from another programming language or scripting language, you know that SELECT can be used for handling multiple situations very easily. Lua does not contain the SELECT statement, so we typically use an IF, ELSE IF structure to handle SELECT type situations. So here we have just the one variable. We've set it equal to zero. If COUNT is equal to zero, then we'll output the first print command. Else if count is equal to 1, then print out the second command, else if count is equal to 2, print out the third, and finally in all other situations print out an else command saying that it didn't equal that value. So this handles all of our different conditions very quickly and easily. As I said, this is typically used in the case of a select where we have multiple po potential values for one variable, and this allows us to find the solution or the execute the proper command structure or set of code for that situation. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening, you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 